Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, and welcome to Intentional Productivity Tips. I am your very favorite strategic productivity partner and host for this show, Megan, and I am so glad that you are here with us today. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that is, as I always say, but this one really is, truly near and dear to my heart. Today, we're talking about your wander working passport, navigating productivity on the go. When you think about it in this day and age, we can work anywhere at any time. And so it opens up our doors for opportunity. So today we're gonna talk about wander working. But before that, let's be sure to say, you are watching me on USA Global TV and Radio's YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, and even get notified when a new episode drops. Do episodes get drops or is it just songs? But anyways, please be notified when a new episode is available. So as I mentioned, today we are going to talk about wonder working. So I have a presentation and let's go ahead and get started and show the presentation right now. We're going up. Okay, so let's talk about your wonder working passport navigating productivity on the go. So as I mentioned before, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because I love the idea of wonder working. I am calling this wonder working, not remote work, and you might wonder why. And part of that is because over the last 10 years, the landscape has changed of what remote work is. When I started remote work in 2014, 2015, it meant you could work anywhere. And now we know that there's a lot of different versions of remote work. Check out my episode last week about working remotely um, if you have any questions about it. But today I wanna talk specifically about wander working. That is the ability to work wherever you are and to take your life and your job and projects with you and be able to go wherever you are. So today we're going to talk about embarking on your journey. So we're going to talk about two topics today. First, we're going to talk about creating your water work passport. And then this week's productivity quick tip, which is about your work preferences. So let's look like, let's look at what a wander working passport could look like. You'll see I've created a wander working passport to success for myself. And there are nine stamps we're going to look through today um, that when we, when we start to learn and think about the best way to wander and work. So let's start with our very first stamp, wonder work and wander lust expectations. So when we're thinking about it, one of the most important things with wonder working is to answer for ourselves. What does it look like for me? When you think about what wonder working is, it's embracing the concept of working anywhere and defining what it means for your lifestyle. It also means of identifying the jobs, the projects, when it is good for you to wander work and when it's good for you to be at home. And it's important to set realistic expectations because when you wander work, work still needs to happen. So we want to talk a little bit about setting realistic expectations and then identify how you're going to track your priorities. As you know, me, productivity person, I'm always going to bring it back to how are we tracking, how are we identifying, how are we moving forward with our progress so that our priorities, our milestones, and our projects are not falling behind. So wander working still does include work. You'll see I've got my wandering Megan um, sticker or my wandering Megan badge. It's important when we're wander working to remember that it still does include work. So when we're wander working, when we're traveling and working wherever we may be, we still need to do some of our work steps, right? We still need to work. 
We still need to implement a daily process checklist into our day. We need to identify the priorities. We need to set expectations for ourselves of what it is that we're going to complete this week, this day, this time that we're wonder working. So we have a clear expectation. I'm putting this at the beginning of the presentation because to me, setting the idea of how you're going to work when you're traveling is the most important thing so that you've got the expectations and you're actually visualizing it. It's important to review your product priorities regularly and then adjust as needed. That is the first stamp of wander working in your passport is identifying what does wanderlust and wander working mean to you. The second stamp is important. And of course, it's about picking a location and destination dreaming. And I'll be honest with you, you're going to see shortly, but I have a whole lot of places I want to wander work. I love the fact that my job allows me to be 100% remote. My work allows me to be 100% remote. My clients love it when I'm at different places and in different backgrounds. And my work at Indelible, Christian knows, and actually he's the one that gave me the Wander Work title. One day he said, Megan, you're just Wander Work. You work wherever you are, you work in Wander. And I was like, I love that. That is so true. I love to Wander Work. And I hope you do too. We might be honest, some of us might be able to wander work more than others, but to me, the idea of being able to take your jobs and projects on the go and being prepared for that. So that's why we're going to talk through that today. One of the first things we want to do is we want to talk about how are we going to craft our wanderlust adventures? How are we going to craft our list of where we're going to go? One of the things we need to do is it's important to start just wanderlust jotting down ideas, destinations, and the places you want to go. That way you can research them. You can identify the best places to go, the best time of year to go, um, how to reflect locations that work for you and your job. So you might not be surprised. For those of you who have been around for a few weeks, you know I love spreadsheets. I love being able to start with information in a spreadsheet and then move it into whatever tool. And so you'll notice I have a location logistics spreadsheet here that I start to, with my wanderlust working. I always want to identify where I play, have a spreadsheet that identifies. Where is it that I want to go? What's the location? Is there a preferred month that I want to go? Is there a preferred time of the year? Do I have places in mind? This is all the brainstorming. You'll notice this is your phase one. Picking a location starts with just saying, hey, what is it? Brainstorm, identify where it is that we want to go because then we can plan it. The next stamp for our productivity success passport for wonder working is we need to be guided and we need to think about our calendar compass. So when we're wander working and traveling, as I said, when you're wander working, it only works if you work. I've had clients and people that have tried to wander work and not work, and their work went away. So they traveled, but they weren't able to keep their projects and work going. So that's the whole idea of talking about this. So we can be realistic and intentional with ourselves. Say, how can we wander work? What is it we need to do? The third step, the third stamp, is that we needed to be we need to be guided by our calendar compass. So when you're setting your wander working compass, what we need to start doing is break out with our calendar, right? We need to start to identify when is it that we can travel? When is it that we need to be at home base? There are certain times of the year and certain projects that I like to be at my home base to do because of my ability to concentrate, my real that I have everything with me. So you want to start with when is it that you're going to travel? Create an overview of logistics, kind of outline what are key tasks, deadlines, and, pro and project timelines that you want to work on while you are traveling. It's important to tr book transportation and accommodations as well. And then we need to develop and really start to think, okay, if we've got our compass, we've got our location set, what we want to do is look at how are we going to work? How are we going to get everything done? So I suggest setting your daily compass and priorities. As you can see here, I have a calendar. I always say to start with the calendar, to start with what are deadlines, what are meetings, what are non-negotiables. For example, for me, Monday mornings are kind of my busiest morning of meetings that I have the most meetings of, Mondays and Fridays. Go figure, right? But what that means for me is, is when I'm traveling, I know Mondays from eight until about one my time. Well, actually it's from five to one my time, I'm gonna be busy. So I, again, start to set expectations. When you're wander working, you still need to work and wander.
So I would say to identify what are tools that you can track your priorities, your current tasks, your calendars, your block times. Setting your daily compass and prioritizing your schedule is going to be a key to your Wonder Working Passport success. Now, a little while ago, we started, a, uh, I showed you the finding a location um, worksheet that I started. This is navigating your travel logistics. So what I've done is I have two parts of the worksheet. The first part is the planning. That was the blue part. And then I have that phase two, which is navigating your travel logistics and your planning calendar. And what I keep in this worksheet are dates, arrival date, departure date. Did I buy my ticket? Again, this is planning in advance. Did I book my hotel? Where am I staying? Am I staying in the Airbnb? Are there experiences or activities that I want to do? Also want to start thinking about, is there a co-working location I can go to? Or even the important, are there medical facilities that I can go to? What we want to start doing with Wonder Working is we want, and when we're going to travel to different places, we want to start to capture when is the days we're going to work? What are the activities? What is that information we need? So when you get there, you're prepared and you don't spend days setting it up. When you think of wander working, I always say visualize this. In wander working, your imagination is the compass and planning is the passport. Envision your adventure, adventures, take bold steps to make them real, and soon the world will become your office. And as we know, that is what wander working is. The world is our office. We can work wherever we are. I told you about my planning worksheet earlier, spreadsheet. So it really is, you need to dare to wander and find places that you wanna explore. You wanna turn your ideas into adventures. At this point, there is no time for judgment, just tracking. So you'll see, I have a couple of wonder work trips that I've finished, and then I have a whole bunch of places I wanna go and times of year that I wanna go there. So being aware and being intentional to plan your wandering logistics, will help you to be prepared and help your journey. Plus, I will be honest with you, I love looking at hotels. I'm a Marriott gal. When I travel, I always generally start with looking at the Marriott app. I sometimes look at Airbnb, but when I'm bored and I'm going down the rabbit hole, oh, looking for um, an Airbnb or a Marriott in any one of my places, Bali or Seattle or Vermont, yeah, that's a good time for me. So it gives your mind time to think about it. The next stamp that we want to talk about, the fourth stamp is the important stamp. It's about getting real and it's about being honest. It's about getting through TSA and possible security concerns. With Wonder Working, we do need to be honest and we need to realize that we're going to experience challenges. While we want our travels to go great and be safe and we want everything to go right, we know that there's going to be things that come up. So as we're preparing to wander, work, and travel where we work, it's important to start to identify what are, common, what are common challenges that you might have. Prepare for potential issues, for example, power outages, contingency plans. Think about resources that you might have, local, um, and acknowledge, it's also important to acknowledge that you can feel lonely, especially if you're traveling alone. So it's important to strategize ways to maintain social connections. There are many different ways. There are many different things that could go wrong. Again, weather issue, lose your money. Uh, I fell and cut my leg open while taking a cute picture. That is actually a true story. I did that in Jamaica at Duns River. Um, and so things are going to happen. So you want to be prepared for what could go wrong. Is it something you need to have some first aid supplies with you? Do you need to go see someone? Um, again, what if there's no Wi-Fi? So when it is comes to wander working, one, my, one recommendation I make is to create a vital information document. And you wanna track things. So this is my vital information for a trip to the Bahamas that I'm planning. Um, and so begin to identify who's the emergency contact. Do you have their home address? Do you have anyone locally that you know or in the area? Um, your health insurance um, carrier. If you're going internationally, do you need international health insurance? What is your policy information? Um, again, you want to have this information. And I always suggest giving a piece, giving a copy of your vital information to a trusted fr friend, family member, or somebody that might be curious where you are and might want to know how to get a hold of you. Providing this information is an extra added step. All right. So 
we talked about getting real. We talked about being honest about what could go wrong. Again, we know if we're gonna be traveling and wander working, we need to have the spirit of adventure. And I find part of the most adventurous part of wander working is stamp five, which is your packing list. For me, packing is always an adventure, right? So it's important that we need to have a list of essential gear for wander working. What are your tech supplies, your office supplies, any personal items? You wanna optimize packing layers 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 um i lived in north san diego county for a lot of years and so it there it was all about layers 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 and so identify what are clothes that you can take that aren't going to be too bulky but on the other hand one thing i do like to do is if i'm going to be taking boxes and i'm going to be going somewhere for a long time i'll just send my boxes ahead of time I learned this. Um, I traveled a lot for work um, in the 90s, in the 2000s, in the 2010s. And so there was a period of time where I was traveling three or four weeks a month. And I will be honest with you, I had a pack set of everything and a home set of everything. And I will tell you that I also am guilty about shopping in places when I travel. And so oftentimes I would have to send boxes home when I was done with the trip. And I realized at that point, you know what? It's easier. Yes, it costs money, but I'm okay with that. I would prefer to do that than try and not take things. So for you, it's about identifying what is your packing? What is it that you want to take? Are you okay taking a lot? Do you want to take a little? What is your packing list and how are you going to prepare for it? I always say there's two things when you're packing. You need to think about the bags you're going to bring and the stuff you're going to bring, right? Because for me, the bags I'm going to bring dictates how much stuff I can bring. If I'm only bringing a backpack, I never only bring a backpack. But if I were for some miraculous reason going to do that, again, I would know what I have to take in that. So again, thinking about your packing checklist when you're wander working and your adventure is so very important. The next thing we wanna think about is we wanna talk with the sixth stamp is about collecting stamps and collecting memories. One of the reasons we like to wander work is because we like to explore and we like to have new adventures. And so when I suggest, and when I like to wander work, there's two parts I think about it. It's, co it's collecting the adventures and then there's also journaling them or documenting them or taking pictures of them. When you're traveling, it is so important to journal or create an experience ledger. So you remember where you were, what happened. You'll also remember places you do and don't like. For example, I was at Costa Mesa a couple of weeks ago. There is a, um, a courtyard that I will never stay at again, right? These things are what we wanna keep track of, right? We wanna keep track of our adventures, commit to documenting your experiences, reflect on your adventures and what you learn write down what you overcame, write down the challenges that you successfully navigated. Even seek out local meetups and seek out ways to meet new people. Your travel journal and adventure is going to be important for you in the long run. Being intentional to track your memories is gonna be critical. So pick your memory method. Is it an album or a journal? Is it electronic photo albums maybe? Maybe take a picture of the day. Or one thing I love to do, especially when I'm at the beach, I go on picture taking walks and I just take hundreds and hundreds of pictures of everything. And then I can go back and edit later, but it's just fun to be in the moment. Find a place to sit and journal, track your adventures, keep small mementos and take pictures of your favorite places so you'll go back. Because I will guarantee you, there's times when we all think, I will never forget this place. I will always remember this place. Hmm. Aging. Now I realize, take the picture and write it down because I might not remember. And so it's good to have that. Tracking your memories and crafting your adventures is going to be important. Just as important as the seventh stamp on your wonderworking passport, which is crafting your itinerary. It's important when you travel, as we've talked about before, finding the place and going is critical but then setting your expectation, create a structured work itinerary that incorporates dedicated work time, work hours, project time, list networking opportunities and experiences. And then you wanna identify specific projects and you wanna identify specific priorities. I'll be honest with you, for me, there are some places that I do some projects better than others. So for example, if I'm at the beach, I'm gonna be better, I'm going to be better writing, creating, I'm going to be doing better reading, 
Sitting down and writing a project plan, not so much. And so we want to identify what and where we're doing the work. To wander or to work, that is the question. One of the things that I suggest when you have the days that you're going to be traveling somewhere is to create a calendar and to identify what are the days I'm going to specifically work? What are the days I'm going to go places? And how does that look? And you'll notice here I have, again, you'll see on Monday, I have all my work days. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, I start to go to Carlsbad, the meditation gardens. I'm planning it in advance so I know what I'm doing and it also helps me to be excited. And I can tell local friends if I want to meet them there. Making wonder work for you. In wander working, your passport to success is a balanced schedule. To truly wander, you must also work. Set aside time to be productive and time to explore, ensuring both adventure and achievement travel together. Embrace all of life's experiences. When you think about it, setting your calendar and crafting that compass is gonna be your guide for how you can wander and work. The eighth step is setting up your base camp. And this one is very important because no matter where you are, you have to find a workspace that's comfortable for you. So it's important to design your productive workspace. You want to start your wander. One of the things with your wander list, um, list is you want to dot, jot down where it is that you want to go. You want to research potential areas, but then you want to identify what is it that I'm going to do? How is it that I'm going to work? And what are the locations that I'm at? How is it going to work for me? So for example, you'll see here, I've got several different places working where I've wandered, whether it's been in the beach, looking out at the beach in Puerto Rico, whether it's been in a hotel room in Nebraska, whether it's been on a train, a cruise at the beach in Seattle or Carlsbad. I love to be able to work where I go. And you'll notice there are some things that I take with me everywhere. My laptop, my iPad, a mouse, a notebook, so it's important when you're wander working to identify what you need to take with you. There's a myth that, oh, I'm just going to go sit on my laptop on the sandy beach and I'm going to get work done. Going to be honest with you, that doesn't work like that. I have really never been able to work on a laptop at a beach, an iPad maybe, but it's sandy and it's hot and it's sunny and there's not always shade. So we want to think in advance where it is that we're going to be wander working and what our base camp sets up like. The ninth stamp and the final stamp, we want to prepare our farewell. As our trip and our journey while wonder working has been good, we also want to plan for our prepare for our departure. We want to finalize our journey home by being organized and packing, right? We want to identify the things we're going to take, the keepsakes. We want to also, I always say, celebrate your travels with a farewell ritual, like a beach walk or something that's a farewell fun for you. Update your travel album and journal to reflect, and then also remind yourself of the experiences that have been gained. So you'll see three of the ways I celebrated wrapping up my wander working. I went on a wine tour when I was in the Calistoga area. I spent an afternoon on a hammock in Puerto Rico. And when I was leaving Seattle, my, re my celebration for myself was that I was going to go to the public market and walk around. So it doesn't have to be anything big, but just when you're ending your farewell, you're going to pack, you're going to get ready to go, and you emotionally want to be prepared to go. You want to have a send-off as well. So we have looked at all of our wonder working stamps. You will see that there are nine stamps. It's setting your wonderlust expectations, figuring out how to pick a location that works for you, identifying your calendar compass. What is your daily schedule going to look like? Being honest, get real. There's going to be some challenges. Are you prepared to deal with them? And do you have your vital information? What does your packing look like? What is your packing list? How are you going to collect stamps and memories? You want to craft your itinerary so that it works for you. So you have wonder and work and adventures. The importance of setting up your base camp is going to be a make it or break it for how much productivity you get and then planning your farewell. So there are nine stamps for my wander working your way passport. I would recommend that whenever you're going to wander work, 
the holidays are coming up. So maybe it's for a few days while you're visiting your friends. Maybe it's a trip or a vacation, or maybe you're seeking out to wander work. I say be intentional to find out what works for you. Be intentional to identify what do you need to do so you can be productive when you are on the go. Again, there are nine stamps that are going to create your wonder working passport. Again, I will say it is important to be intentional with your work, whether you're wandering or whether you're at home. It's a little more fun to be intentional when you're wandering and plan for it. And so what I say is the world is your office. Figure out how to make it work for you so you can be productive on the go. The next thing I want to talk about is this week's pro productivity quick tip. It kind of falls in line with, with wonder working. It's knowing yourself. It's your workspace essentials checklist. Over the last month, I've been traveling and wonder working. And when I came back to the home base, I was beginning to wonder, what are my essentials? What do I need to make me feel comfortable? Is it the technology, your planner and paper things? What items keep you, make you comfortable to make it feel like home? What are the organizational tools you need? And what do you need to have a calm, productive workspace? I say in this week's productivity quick tip, the reminder is to be, sent, be intentional to set up your essential workplace checklist so that your workplace is, again, a place for you to be calm and productive. Some things you might include, some of the stuff and things, again, paper, pens, favorite markers, favorite AirPods, favorite mug, any of those things. Identify for yourself. Take a look. When you're sitting down to work, what is it that you want around you? Because again, if our workspace is comfortable, if our workspace is calm and we're able to be productive, think about the effort we're going to save and that it's worthwhile to make, make sure that our workspace is essential. So that was today's productivity quick tip is to identify what you need for your essential workspace, your stuff and things that will help you to provide a calm and productive workspace. So I am Megan. Again, I am your very favorite strategic productivity partner. I am also your host for this show, Intentional Productivity Tips. Thank you for joining me on this wander working adventure today. I hope you are thinking about your wander working passport and how you can be productive on the go. You can find a new episode every Wednesday at 5 o'clock Pacific time. You can find it on USA Global TV and Radio's YouTube channel, where please, again, like, subscribe, and be notified when there's a new episode. If you have questions for me, you can reach out to my website, indelible.global, or you can even email me at Megan at, you can email me at Megan at indelible.global. That was a lot to say. Email Megan at indelible.global. Or you can follow me on Instagram at Intentional Productivity Tips. I thank you for spending this time with you. I hope you make it a great week. I hope you learned at least one thing that you're going to take with you. And I hope that you are productive and make this the best week possible. Now for a word from our sponsors.
Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. My name is Roland, Roland Friedel. And maybe as you can recognize from my accent, I'm Austrian. So it's a small country in the middle of Europe, in the heart of Europe. And yeah, from I'm 59 years old. I'm a father and a grandfather. And from my business background, after my very short but very successful corporate career, I was the youngest member of board of director in a, in a, in a huge business. A huge company. I started my own businesses in different areas, in different industries, um, and I made a. I got a lot of experience. What is working, what is not working, and about two and a half decades ago, I started a training, coaching, consulting company, Spartan Performance Systems, where I did and still do train and consult international huge businesses worldwide, like Xerox and other uh, big players in the world. So we do a lot of sales trainings and management trainings with my team in different languages. That's my main background in business. Besides that, I'm very engaged in men's work and also in the environment. That's, that's my, my background. Make it like. So I'm very, to be honest, I'm very curious about what's going on in the world. I'm, I'm, I love to learn. I love to travel. So my huge passion is traveling. Right now, as you can see the background, I'm sitting in my motorhome. So after 14 years living on a beautiful island, I decided to move into my motorhome and travel to Europe and live and work from my motorhome. So, and I, I got engaged uh, to USA Global TV and Radio actually a year and around nine, 10 months ago, a very good friend of mine, he contacted me and asked me if he can invite me for an interview in USA Global TV and Radio. I guess the show was called The Journey of My Life. And to be honest, in the beginning, I said no, no, because uh, I had very bad experience on, on, on interviews in my business careers. I did it twice for a TV channel in Austria. And then they, they cut it and edited it. And at the end, my my comment was totally different what, 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 than to the reality I said. So I said in the beginning, no, but I trusted this guy. So they said, okay, let's do it. He told me, I don't have to fly to the US. I can do it from my home. That was, At the time, this was his island in Mallorca. So and it was an, an amazing, uh, yeah, and, and a beautiful conversation. And then Dr. Jacqueline contacted me and asked me if I'm interested in, in becoming a co-moderator of a show. And so we started the, the Mallorca Connection, which is a, a weekly show on, on Monday, the Mallorca Connection. Um, yeah, I got more and more involved to become an elevated listener because I strongly believe it's important to listen first before before you talk. And I had the chance to host and moderate and design my own shows like the Earth Show in the past, the, the Man Shows. I became a talking head, an expert on, on business topics. So I, I hosted, moderated, uh, I guess about more than 100, maybe 200, I don't know right here, uh, shows on USA Global Team Radio, and I still do. And and finally, we started the It's Your Healthy Lifestyle, a very good show, and we bring a new one on uh, about about the planet, planet Earth. Yeah, that's a little bit what I'm doing here on, on USA Global TV and radio. So why I'm doing this? Uh, first of all, um, I really love new medias. I love the platform. I love the, the work that this Dr. Jacqueline is doing to educate people. It's all about sharing, caring, and connecting and, and networking. And the benefit I got out of this in my personal experience, I learned a lot of, about myself, to be honest. I learned a lot about my strengths in in, in moderating, in hosting, in, in talking live on, uh, in front of a video camera. I learned a lot of my, myself, where are my strengths, where are my weak points that I have to improve. I met a, a new, interesting, a lot of new, interesting people. Some of them became friends of mine. Uh, yeah, actually, after all, it's a hell of work, to be sure. Yes, it is to be prepared to invite people for the shows, to find new topics, to, 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 to do research on the facts. But I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the industry, the media industry. I learned a lot about broadcasting, videos, interviewing. And as I said, I met interesting people, a lot of interesting people, and I also made new friends where I'm very happy for that. So, yeah, using Global TV and Radio, it's the platform to connect. It's about sharing and caring. And for me, USA Global TV and Radio is a huge family, and I'm very thankful and grateful for this experience. And yeah. And for the, I guess the best is yet to come. Thanks a lot from Roland from Austria. Thank you. Bye.